Is there anyone who can't see me? Is there anyone who can't hear me? Is there anyone who can't hear me? Can you all see me? Are there people who can't see me? Are there people who can't hear me? But do you think I'm here? That's exactly how God is. There is your lesson on how God is. I've not gone mad. Okay? That's exactly how God is. The Lord told me to do that so that you may know that just because you can't see God doesn't mean you can't hear God, but also that you may be able to know that God is exactly like that. He's right there. He's right there. Sorry, I'm trying to do a wardrobe thing. Buana Sifiwe. Jesus is Lord. I hope you're working out your salvation. Has it gone in again? Are we good? Are we good? All right. So we're continuing today, and I believe we are finishing today on the series about uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. So this is about the blood of Jesus Christ, one of the most powerful messages you will ever hear. I know we like messages about God is working. We like messages about you're going to get very rich. We like messages about, you know, things that make you go, woo! This one may not make you go, woo! But if you receive the word, if you understand the word, if you allow this word to work in your life, it will change your life forever. Shall we pray? Our dear loving Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that even though we don't see you, you're there. Even though we don't see you working, you are always working. And Lord, you work for us, oh God. It's amazing to us that though you are God, that you, Lord, would serve a man. That you, Lord, would help a man. That you, Lord, would guide a man. And that you, Lord, would desire to fellowship with us. Lord, today we are reminded of the Garden of Eden that you always came down and walked with Adam and Eve and spent time with them and fellowshiped with them. So at the beginning of time, O oh God, when you created Adam and Eve, Lord, it was for fellowship. May we never forget that, O oh God. And no matter what we do, may we cherish fellowship with you. May we desire to know you. And Lord, May the depth of this word come to life. Father, we thank you that when things failed, when nothing was working, that our Lord Jesus Christ stepped down on earth. He walked in our place. He walked where we walk. And finally, he was crucified. He died and he was buried. And he exchanged his life for ours. Where we deserve judgment, Lord God, we've been set free because of the blood of Jesus. Lord, I pray that this word would find fertile soil and that, Lord, it would truly, truly build our people. Father, we pray for the people in this room as the people who are watching from our audience, King of Glory. Thank you, Lord, for the dear ones 
who spent timeless time yesterday, Lord, just sorting out our online streaming, oh God, to make sure that everything is working. May you remember them, Lord, as they work behind the scenes, and may you do mighty and great things in their lives, oh God. Father, we thank you for every person that has gathered here today, and we thank you for those who are watching us from all over the world. We bless them too, O oh God, and we enjoy them in this fellowship. We thank you also for those who watch this message later, beyond today, O oh God. May this word continue to be active, Lord, for your word is active, ever living. And Lord, may it also be a prophetic word that even when it is watched, even when it is listened to, years from now, my God, it would speak into somebody's specific situation, Lord, that they will know that this word, you caused it to come out because you knew they would be there. And Lord, even as you're teaching me nowadays, oh God, and in this season, that Lord, no matter what comes, you're already there. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And Jesus, I just want to say, let this word come alive. Holy Spirit, this is a preaching that is supernatural and it's beyond me. So you come and teach about the blood. You come and teach about the power of the blood. Come and preach about the implications of the blood. Come and minister about what the blood of Jesus truly means. Even as we have this, our second part of this series. And if you so desire the Spirit of the Lord, let there be a third part. If at all today is not the end, we submit ourselves to you and we call this the school of the Holy Spirit. For no man can teach like you can, Spirit of the living God. So you take over. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. I feel such a joy in my spirit this morning and I bless the Lord. For as I've been thinking about the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, as I've been um, praying about it, as I've been reading up on it, Every day, it's like God brings something new to us. I welcome my dear mother-in-law. Some of you call your mothers-in-law, mothers-in-love, to convince yourself that you love them. I use the English version. I call her my mother-in-law, but she's more precious to me than a mother. I thank God for her. She's my friend. And, um, you know, we were just up late last night just talking. It's interesting to have a mother-in-law who you can just bond and be free with and just be yourself with and who supports you and just loves you just as you are. So I thank God for you, Mom, today. I thank God that I'm not one of those that understands what a, ma a bad mother-in-law is. <laughs> You're a sweetheart, Mom, and we love you. We love you. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's an honor and a privilege to have you fellowship with us. So we started last week to talk about the blood of Jesus. And uh, the Bible talks about the weapons of our warfare, that they are not carnal, but are mighty in God, even to the pulling down of strongholds. The blood of Jesus is one of the weapons of our warfare. In case you don't understand what these weapons of our warfare are, please note that the blood of Jesus is one of the most powerful weapons of warfare. When you say, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you, no matter what you're going through, I find that the enemy just pulls back. He pulls back. Sometimes if you have a nightmare or you have a demonic attack in the night because Satan likes to show off his muscles sometimes and the goodness is that God uses those opportunities as opportunities for us to learn until you get to a place where you're not afraid anymore of demons. Sometimes when that happens, you may say, Jesus, Jesus. And sometimes by the way, for some reason, some, for some reason, sometimes the demons may hold back, then come back. Hold back, then come back. But when you say the blood of Jesus is against you, I plead the blood of Jesus. I have found that there is no demon that can stand the smell of the blood of Jesus, the sound of the blood of Jesus, the look of the blood of Jesus, and most definitely what the blood of Jesus represents. The blood of Jesus represents a covenant. It is a covenant. The blood of Jesus is about an altar because a blood is, comes where there is a sacrifice. And a sacrifice means that there is an altar. So whenever blood is shed, and that is what Satan is all about in terms of raising up altars. Whenever you see blood shed, an accident, and there is blood shed, somebody was killed by the cutting off of their head. Somebody died and there was blood everywhere. That is an altar. 
because life is in blood. And when life is a given, then Satan lays claim or God lays claim, whichever side it is. And the blood of a savior was shed over 2,000 years ago. Satan thought he had Jesus. So he began to rise in a man called Judas. The other day we were having a discussion with uh, one of my inner circle members and were saying, could it be that Judas did not know that he was going to crucify Jesus? Or was he just pretending when they were dipping the bread in the blood and then he was saying, surely it is not I, Lord. What kind of a pretense person was he? Is it that he never confided in anybody? When the perfume was broken and it was poured on Jesus' feet and he got disgruntled and he began to say, surely this is equivalent of a week's wages. Why couldn't we just sell it and feed it to the poor? The enemy was already putting something, sowing something. And how come, in spite of the Savior teaching, Judah still didn't get it? I present it to you, church, that the human heart is desperately wicked, far above all things. And we must not trust our hearts. We must be careful to ask God to watch our hearts. We must guard our hearts. We must watch ourselves and be careful. Because Judas was in Jesus' inner circle, sat with him three years, and still he crucified the Savior. And he didn't just crucify him by, you know, he could have pointed him out. He could have described him. He could have hung out in the two bushes and said, You know, he could have gestured, he could have done something. He could have betrayed him in ways that you and I know. But he chose to betray him with a kiss, with a pretense of love. Can you imagine that? How desperate can the human heart be that you can hang out with the Savior and we need to be careful to allow the blood of Jesus to do its work. Because you can hang out with Jesus you can be coming to church. And on that day, Jesus says, I do not know you. May we learn to plead the blood of Jesus. May we learn to meditate on the blood of Jesus. There are some people who are known to have um, communion every day. There are people who are known to have communion daily. And the reason why they have communion daily is to remember the blood of Jesus. There's a hymn that says, Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. If you know that you're pr prone to wander. If you know that you're prone to leave the presence of God. If you know you're one of those people that require a short leash. Please learn to meditate on the blood of Jesus and what that sacrifice meant. And it is good to take communion daily. And yes, you can do it at home between you and the Savior every day. Whether in the morning or in the evening or at lunchtime. But you just take some juice and you take some bread and take time to meditate upon the Lord Jesus. But then again, ask God to help you that it doesn't become a religious thing you do. Remember, the human heart is desperately wicked above all things. So when you are taught by the Englishman, follow your heart, I tell you, never ever follow your heart. Never follow your heart. Otherwise, you will be misled. So the blood of Jesus is about covenant. The covenant that God made with all of us. That when God looks at us, the Father looks at us from heaven, and he is here on earth too. But when he looks at you, the thing that stops him from destroying you is because he sees the blood. He sees the blood. So when he sees the blood, he passes over us. When he sees the blood on the doorposts of our homes, because our homes are given to Jesus, he passes us over. And that is why it's important 
to have a family altar. It is critical to take time to pray, to take time to disconnect from your parents before you, to take time to disconnect from your grandparents, to take time to learn the ways of the Lord and to remind yourselves that we are given to the lineage of David, that we are sons of Abraham. And when we are at home, the things we do need to represent that we are covenant children. What we watch on television will represent a covenant. Remember, blood declares a lineage. And if we are of the blood of Jesus Christ, and we are of the lineage of David, it means that what? We are royal. We are royal. Turn to the person on your left or on your right. If it's a man, say, hi, prince. If it's a woman, say hi, princess. Mwangalia na useme vizuri. Don't say it like you're jealous. Say it like you mean it. Some of you can't even look at each other in the eyes. Nini ni sasa? Are you being tuned? You're not being tuned. And by the way, let me tell you. In saying that thing, Sometimes some of you even, you know, when you know by there, Patangi marriages, because you're too holy than not thou. This story of, I tell you, turn to your left, turn to their right. Sometimes a vision can appear as a result of that. <laughs> Sometimes you can say, hi, prince, and you just hear, he's the one. <laughs> Sometimes you can say, hi, princess, and you suddenly just get a vision, and you realize, well, hello, prince. <laughs> Angaliangeni to pastor. Me, I've been married. We are almost going to two decades, Buana. Yeah? You know, there's a pastor who used to tell us, when you're single, don't, don't, don't worship like, Hallelujah. You can take a, well, I'm trying to be dramatic, but clearly my handkerchief is not close to me. Thank you, Jesus. Because <laughs> sometimes you might catch a vision. You might notice that that guy is lost with Jesus. And there's nothing as attractive as a man who is lost with Jesus, so long as he's not your man. He's not, 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 he's not someone else's man. Okay? So don't look at my husband and say, oh, he looks so attractive. No. <laughs> he's supposed to be attractive to me. Sour, sour. <laughs> Let me teach you some of these things. Some of you are fasting and praying. And the prince next to you and the princess next to you is, is the one. Some of you will have some strange testimony. Imagine we used to sit next to each other and you katuna mwanele tu kwambali. But back to the blood of Jesus. Life is in the blood of Jesus. Life is in the blood. Let's read Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. But there may sound like I'm joking, but I teach, eh? So um, Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 said, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by reason of the life. Leviticus 17 verse 11. I'm sorry, in your bulletin it says Leviticus 16 verse 11, but it's actually 17 verse 11. And then, of course, this is the amplified version. So by reason of the life which it represents. You know, yesterday as I was praying, or the, maybe the day before as I was praying, you know, since I started working, so nowadays I don't even know which day is which. I just know Sundays. But um, as I was praying, the Lord began to speak to me. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. The Lord began to speak to me about what it means to have life in the blood. The Lord gave me a vision of an expectant mother. Do the babies in the womb eat? Do they take a fork and knife? No. Do they have a spoon? No. Is somebody feeding them, you know, mash or whatever it is? No. So how do they eat? Life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. And the Lord told me it's exactly like that. That life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. That when the blood of Jesus flows, because it still flows, it's still living, it's still active, 
It's not dead because dead blood is not active. But when the blood of Jesus, which is alive and flowing on the old rugged cross, as it continues to speak better things than the blood of Abel, Hebrews 12, 24, the blood of Jesus also supplies. Everything that we need is in the blood of Jesus. So when you lack, one of the things you can do is say, Lord, I thank you for the life that is in the blood of Jesus. And I thank you that it's giving me provision. I thank you for the life that is in the blood of Jesus. It's giving me strength. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. It's giving me wisdom. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. It's giving me courage. I think anything you need that is in the form of life, is found in the blood of Jesus. Some of us do not have, there's an aspect of, of course, there's teaching that comes through the blood, life of the blood of Jesus because of the power of the Holy Spirit because you cannot separate a man's spirit from their blood. Yes. By the way, I wish believers would begin to understand about the power of the blood. Do you know one of the things that God has done to us and for us is that the blood of Jesus flows through our veins. I want to repeat that. The blood of Jesus flows through our veins. Where do I get that from? I am not by my own. I was bought with a price. So if I'm not my own, then everything I have belongs to God. And can God be found in anything carnal? So when the Lord transforms us by the renewal of our minds, as we pray, as we spend time with God, and remember we are of the lineage of Jesus Christ, one of the things that God does when we give our lives to Christ is that our DNA changes. So your father on earth ceases to be your father according to the spiritual realm. To all those who believed him, he gave the right to be called sons of God. So your DNA is the DNA of our Father. Is the DNA of our Lord. And as such, if that is the case, no disease can be found in you. We need to begin to grasp these things. One of the things the Lord began to deal with me in 2012 is to teach me about the power of the anointing. About the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And part of the power of Jesus Christ is that every time you go before the throne of grace, so that you may receive mercy and find help in our time of need. I think that's Hebrews 4.16. If you're doing this, this is one of the, the, the scripture memories we are learning. When we enter in, we enter by what? The blood of Jesus. So if you enter by the blood of Jesus, is the blood of Jesus walking next to you like this? In your blood? No. The blood of Jesus comes upon you, covers you, Finishes everything, and when you enter in, the father says, yes, my son. Because remember, even daughters are sons in the presence of the father. What may I do for you? Even before you begin to say, father, I have sinned, forgive me. Father, I have done, forgive me. Father, I have been, forgive me. The blood of Jesus has already gone ahead of you and is upon you and speaks. So that every time you come before the father, if you are born again, the reason we come with confidence is because it is finished. And some of us, you know, go before God like... <laughs> God has seen, God has done, and... And God, <laughs> then finally you start feeling something. You know we love feelings. Then that's when you go. And any time you're, you know, operating like the Old Testament, where they had a cabel around their legs. So that if things are thick, they ring the cabel. They're pulled out quickly before God hits them. We are under the blood of Jesus. So long as you are born again, no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on, because life happens, come confidently before the throne of grace 
and the Bible says, so that you may receive help, you may receive mercy, and find help. God understands. Receive help and find mercy. Receive help, find mercy. Help is in the presence of God, and yet the usher that you find that takes you to the presence of God is the blood of Jesus. Life is in the blood. And that's why Jesus understood that he had to bleed out. He could have jumped off a building, said, this blood is for you. Cool. Then I don't even know what would have. God forbid. They could have cut off his head. They could have stoned him. But last week we learned that it was very deliberate. The way of the cross was very deliberate. Every wound, every slap, everything. Last week we learned that when they put a crown of thorns and Satan thought he was so clever and the demons thought, what shall we do? What shall we do? Oh, I know, I know, I know. You know, demons are stupid like that. Eh? Those are the conversations they have. I know, I know. Then one is there saying, yeah, crown of thorns, crown of thorns. I love to put your injury, king of the Jews. Ah, yes! Then they put a crown of thorns on him. And they're like, ha, 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 look how he looks. And you know the people who were what the demons were doing. They thought he was so clever. They said he hasn't had enough. Pull out his beard. He's been carrying around a long beard at the, 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 the like oil going down the beard of Aaron to this unity business. Let's tear apart that unity. Let's pull out his beard. And they pulled out the beard and the demons are laughing. <laughs> Look at him, half beard. <laughs> you know, some king you are, some priest you are. Priests are supposed to have a beard, but part of your beard is missing. But every wound, every wound, Satan thought he had defeated him. Satan thought he was mocking him. Satan did not understand that Jehovah is the one who controls the earth because the earth and the fullness belong to God. And when he allows something, he allows it to use Satan as a weapon of whatever it is that the Lord may be glorified. And all things work together for good. All things in the life of Christ as well in your, as in your life and in my life. And as we begin to understand about the power of the blood of Jesus, we also begin to understand when he said, it won't be easy. In this life you'll have trouble, but I have already overcome. So we begin to rejoice in trouble. We begin to rejoice in difficulty. Last night I was encouraging a mother who I've been praying with over her children. And um, I, as I finished, I told her, you know, I was checking the progress of the children. They're making progress, but it's progressive. And I told her, Jesus loves you. And she replied, she says, I know. And she said, gone are the days when I think that when God doesn't do something for me, or God doesn't act the way I want him to act, that he doesn't love me. And you know, I was like, that's the way. A lot of us Christians, when we go through difficulty, when something happens, when God seems to be a little late, when it looks like there's a delay, we forget about the blood of Jesus and we start moving as though God owes us something. As though God has a debt with us. But we need to be aware that all things work together for good. All. Sometimes even our sin situations, even our disobedience situations, sometimes God just has a way of mercy saying no, and later God uses that thing, that very thing that the enemy looked like he had a hold on you on. A lot of ministries are birthed from disobedience. That in the process of having been disobedient earlier, as a result of your mistakes, you understand more. As a result of, you know, your failures, you're more passionate. For me, it took me 15 years to answer the call of God on my life. 15 years. So if you find me passionate, sometimes it's because I feel like I'm doing catch-up. And I'm like, we have got to make up for those 15 years. It has to be as though they were never, ever there. And yet I've come to learn 
that even though I was late, the Lord allowed it for my training. Moses took 40 years. So don't beat yourself up. Let the blood of Jesus speak in whatever situation, whichever circumstance. Life is in the blood of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you that the blood of Jesus is the greatest medicine of all. It is the greatest medicine of all. Because the blood of Jesus heals. Not only does it save, but it heals. And remember, salvation is not just from sin. There is salvation from death. So the blood of Jesus can reverse the course of things. So that even though in your family you have a thing of premature death, and because the demons are never late, and there's a grave that is open, the blood of Jesus is able to close that hole that has your name on it, and the mercy of God says, not this one. This one is different. This one is mine. This one will live to a rich ripe old age because she has loved me, because he has loved me. Psalm 21 says, with long life, I will satisfy you. So part of the protection, part of the salvation, part of the life that is in the blood of Jesus means you will have a long, fruitful life. That you may be able to tell other generations the Bible talks about from generation to generation. One generation will sing to another. One generation will speak to another. I cannot wait to hold my grandbabies and tell them about Jesus. I cannot wait to hold my great-grandchildren and tell them about Jesus. I cannot wait to hold my, my great-great-great-grandchildren. My great -grandchildren. I believe the Lord is more than able to do and to fulfill and to achieve because God is. You may have a situation in your family where, yes, you're going to have long life, but Satan ensures that that long life is painful, that day and night you're crying to God, just take me. Just take me. Take me, Lord Jesus, take me. But the blood of Jesus ensures that ailments that are related to old people remain that way. They're related to old people. You're not just an old person. You're an old princess. You're an old prince. You are royalty. So when the Lord sees the blood, it passes over you. So that you will pass on with your eyesight. So na ingia minguni ukiona. Yes. Even though people in your family lose eyesight. Some of us prepare ourselves that tunajia tuna losing eyesight. What are you speaking about? Which, which family are you referring to? Because the lineage of Jesus Christ does not have blindness. We were blind but now we see. The lineage of Jesus Christ does not have arthritis. The lineage of Jesus Christ does not have cancer. The lineage of Jesus Christ does not have, uh, what are they called? See, gee, these diseases where you begin to forget. Until all of a sudden your children come to you and, and you're like, who are you? Then they tell you, we are your children. Until, and then after you turn, you, you're like, who are you? We are your children. And then you turn again, who are you? Which Jesus are you going to be representing as you're doing that? The Holy Spirit is called the spirit of remembrance. Amen. He reminds you everything. In our family, we have that thing of memory loss. And the enemy tried to give it to me as early as when Jonathan was born. I would enter a room and I'm like... And then I start thinking, oh yeah, my grandmother has memory loss. And you know, the enemy in a very subtle way tries to tell you it is kawaida. It is coming. And then I called a doctor. <coughs> then I was told, oh, it's lack of sleep. It's lack of sleep. And then I, I, um, I started saying, oh, let me sleep better. Da, 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 da. But the Lord started reminding me, you are of the lineage of Jesus Christ. Stop remembering Mendy. Stop remembering the Nanga. Stop remembering I don't know Manu. Stop remembering I don't know what. And remember... I am of the lineage of Jesus Christ. So if I want to know how things go in this lineage of Jesus Christ, I can look at my older sisters and brothers in Christ. I can look at those who've gone before us. I can look at Billy Graham and say, yo, brother, you encourage me. You are over 100 years old. Hallelujah. 
So when he's celebrating his birthday, I'm like, oh yeah, coming up, my 100th year birthday. You can even start early saying, Musevingi, because clearly we're having it in Venice. And I'm paying no coin. You better save. You have 60 years notice. You have 72 years notice. You have I don't know how many years notice. Give them notice and let them know for my 100th birthday. And I'll be munching on the cake with all my teeth. Yes. Pray that that day I'll not be fasting. Because you know the way we love to fast when we are the lineage of Jesus Christ. And as we fast, the old is shed off. And the Lord just does a new thing in our life. What do you proclaim? So no one has ever driven a car in your family. Which family? It's your former family. But guess what? King David was rich. Joseph was rich. But even without looking at them, cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. So I don't need to come and tell you, sow seed, sow seed. Sow seed what? The Holy Spirit is more than able to tell you, take that, take it to the house of the Lord, because I am your teacher. And then I will bless you. You just need to be able to listen. Tune into Heaven FM. Tune in. And then believe that God's desire is to bless you. Can you imagine? You know, hey, on Tuesday, when I was preaching, I couldn't even talk. So I didn't even say this. Do you know what I saw? I saw Jesus looking at the congregations of the world. He was holding a bow with revival. His glory. Beautiful things. Everything we need to heal the world and give us like a new Eden. He was holding it like this and bending like this. And he was just saying, won't you receive what I want to give you? Won't you receive what I want to give you? And then he told me, they don't hear me. They don't listen to me. And he was weeping. They saying, why won't you receive it? Why won't you receive it? You know, the enemy has worked very hard by the time you are whatever age you are to make you think you're a nuisance. He made sure your mother told you enough times until you got it. You're such a nuisance. You're such a nuisance. You're such a problem. You're such a bother. Your mother, shut up. You're such an issue. You're disturbing me. Can't you see? Can't you see? I'm busy. So the enemy made sure that someone around you made you, somebody who was important, somebody who represented provision, somebody who represented a father figure, a mother figure, an important figure, a leader figure, made you feel like you need to book an appointment. And still you're not transformed by the renewal of the mind to know that whenever you appear before the father, he's like, oh, hello, daughter. Hello, my son. I'm so pleased that you came. And you know when we go before the presence of God, even if we go all billions, whatever billions we are, the Lord has the same response to all of us. And because he's omnipresent, he's able to give you his 100% attention and you are the only one that came. You just need to get that revelation. Ask God to use the blood of Jesus to transform you that the blood of Jesus may bring life in the place of that death of thinking you're a nuisance, of thinking you're a problem, so that you may begin to have a revelation as you enter in by the blood of Jesus. Let God speak to you. Ask God, open my eyes, Lord. Let me see you. Let me know how pleased you are that I came. And let me tell you, prayer time will become a joy. You enter the presence of God and you feel joy. You, 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 just, you, just feel, you just feel rest come upon you. Transformation by the renewal of the mind as we enter into the presence of God by the blood. Life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. In the atmosphere. Some of you have never taken a moment to check, and I want you to do your homework, I want you to check how much oxygen costs. And if you're having a problem in hospital, at Nairobi Hospital, what is the cost of oxygen? How many tanks will you need per day? How much oxygen will you need per day? And when your bills, how much will the oxygen come to per day 
if you're wholly dependent on that. But we have life-giving blood through the blood of Jesus. And just like a baby receives free oxygen through the mother's blood, we receive oxygen through the blood of Jesus. And when we inhale, stop saying things like, oh, you know, there's lead poisoning, you know, there's carbon poisoning. I don't know, there's what some of us have become so Americanized. As you inhale, inhale through the blood of Jesus and know that your lungs are whole. Your body is receiving oxygen that is purified by the blood of Jesus. Life-giving oxygen that no sickness. Do you know there is oxygen treatment? That you can be put in an oxygen chamber, especially when you have brain damage, and just by inhaling pure oxygen with nothing else, you are healed. Well, beloved, daily, moment by moment, we are breathing in pure oxygen that comes through the blood of Jesus. So our brain is growing by the day. Our brain is able to do things that other brains cannot do. Our brain is able to think in ways that other brains cannot think. Because you are royal and because of the blood of Jesus. So can you stop thinking through poverty? And think abundance. Think the glory of God. Think the presence of God. There is a scripture that says Christ has become wisdom unto us. So you're thinking business ideas. Separate a moment in the day. When you're praying, you're seeking. And as you're seeking, as there's an overflow, take a deep inhalation and say, thank you, Lord, for the business concepts you're giving me in your presence. Hallelujah. I receive them for Christ has become wisdom unto me. And as the blood of Jesus brings life, the oxygen is speaking into my mind now, giving me pure oxygen, just like the scientists have confirmed. Indeed, the perfect oxygen from the blood of Jesus is now ministering to my brain. Every form of deadness, every form of slumber, every form of aging is being reversed in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you something. Because of the blood of Jesus, do you know that even our dental formula is transformed? Do you know that if somebody takes the brain of a believer who walks with God, who understands who God is, who walks in revelation of the glory of God, do you know I don't need a scientist to confirm to me that our brain is different? As in if brains were to be taken, boom, 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 and then you have a brain of an unbeliever, I promise you, if you have the brain of a believer who understands, you know there are believers who don't understand, majority of believers who don't understand who God is. They don't, they, don't, they don't understand the calling. They don't understand the magnitude of what the blood meant. They don't understand what happened at Calvary on that day. Because it takes revelation by the Holy Ghost. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to enable you to understand. And you know for me, it's taken about two, three weeks of I just began to say, Why? Why? What was going through you? As they hit you, as they pulled your beard, what was going through you? Reveal it to me, God. What was going through you? The value of a soul. And in the last two weeks, the Lord has downloaded to me things I've never known. For the last 20 whatever years I've been born again. But what does it take? It takes changing your prayer life. When you pray, you know some of us don't even pray for ourselves. But you know, it's selfish to pray for myself. Me, I pray for myself more than I pray for anyone else. God taught me. Because I don't know if anyone else will pray for me. And if I'm well, I'm able to be a well that people feed from. So I pray for myself. Father, just deal with me, Lord. Is there an unyielded part of my life? God, is there something about my mind that needs to change? Because if the mind can change, the rest will change. That's why the Lord talks about transformation by the renewal of the mind. Our minds must be made new. Re, be done again. New, made new. So that whatever we already know, it is changed so that we can begin to be able to absorb. When you read a scripture, you're like, come on now. Hey, shh. Hey, I've never seen that before. Whoa, Lord. Let me just absorb that for a minute. Aki what? Then you read it again. Like, ooh, Lord, Lord, Lord. You've got to be kidding me. You should see me in my, in my prayer room. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, Jesus, let me just dance for you a little bit. Aki what? You did what? 
You said what? Ish, Lord. Oh, Father, give me the grace to take that in, Lord. It's too much for me. My God, you're too much. Oh, but guess what? You cannot get there unless your mind is renewed. Because someone else will read that scripture, they're like, mm, okay. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You, with your renewed mind, you're like, for God so loved the world. Wait, Lord. I am in the world, but I'm not of this world. So you love the world. So if you love the world, how much do you love me? Woo hoo 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 hoo! You loved the world. And I am in your kingdom. This blood of Jesus, oh, a renewed mind. It happens through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ enables us when we open the scriptures, they come alive. So many Christians read the Bible and they find it the most boring thing. Ever. They're just too embarrassed to say so. I'm not going to ask you to raise up your hands, but I know a few of you are here. You read the Bible and it's duty. There's so much. Hey, we are supposed to read the Bible. Hey. Become a novel. And then, and then you have a holiness box, a holiness list. So you just tick. Tick. Mesoma Bible Leo. Tick. Fulfilling all righteousness. Tick. Go and pray. You know you must pray daily. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, you know God. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. God. Oh, oh, and I pray for that one who is sick. We are told to pray for the one who is sick. God, you are a healer. Uh, 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 Facebook, uh, and then uh, you know, you know, um, God, yeah, there are those children for uniform. Uh, God just raised and God bless and God, but there's no relationship. It is tragic for you to be born again and not to enjoy a relationship with God. How do you enjoy a relationship with God? Through the blood of Jesus. Through the shed blood of Jesus. It transports you into the place you need to get to. It lifts you into the place you need to get to. It ushers you in. There's a man of God who, who gave a, t um, a story about how he said, Lord, I ask you to, for the blood of Jesus to just cleanse this entire sanctuary and for the blood of Jesus to make a way for people to get saved. Then his eyes were opened, and he just saw blood on the corridors everywhere of the church. Like now these this aisles and everything. He just saw blood everywhere. Then he asked God, what's going on? What's going on? My son, at the age of, how old were you, Jonathan, when you saw the blood? You were 13. My son, at the age of 13, came home, told me, God led him through the Holy Spirit to go to every desk in the school, and to lay hands on the desks. They told me, I know, mom, there was so much power. Da, da, da. The interesting thing is at that very moment, I was in Westlands, he was on Gong Road. I was in Westlands. It began to rain a very funny kind of rain. And I had the Holy Spirit say, saying, someone is praying. I wanted to agree with them in faith. And there was thunder. The trees looked like they were going to fall until people stopped to check what is going on. And then at some point I had, ba, 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 ba. And Jonathan explained to me, Later on, without me telling him, I connected because when he finished, all the doors just started banging for the school. Pa, 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 everywhere. 13 years old. But here's what he told me. That as he went to lay hands on the desk, he would see a drop of blood coming from his hand and falling on the desk. In that year, Jonathan must have led over 500 souls to Christ. Did you count them by any chance? But the children got saved. The children got saved. They used to look for Jonah and tell him, would you lead me to Christ? Even the teachers acknowledged him. So that, by the way, even when he left that school, went to another high school, came back, they made him the head of spiritual matters without even checking where he's at. 
automatically he was given a red tie. You're the head of spiritual matters. Red tie, by the way, blood. Eh? But can you hear that revelation from a 13-year-old? I was shocked. So as he laid hands on every desk and he was claiming every child for the kingdom of God, the blood was being dropped on their desks. So the children just ended up getting saved without anybody even necessarily preaching. He preached very little. But I used to tell him, I can't wait to hear this preaching of yours, man. It must be deadly. You're leading more people to Christ than me, and I'm the pastor. You know? Jonah would go. I remember Nairobi Safari Club. He went, and they turned a birthday into a worship night. He has overcome. He has overcome every high thing. The children are going around the swimming pool. Every high thing. And who's going to tell children to shut up? Shariako with your atheism. Every high thing must come down. Guys got saved. This boy would go everywhere. He's an evangelist. He would go everywhere. And the Lord would just, you know, do crazy things. But why? Now we've gotten the elaboration. The Lord opened his spiritual eyes to see. He didn't even know what it was. He was wondering, he was seeing a drop of blood coming from his hand and falling. Coming from his hand and falling. Remember, we are the body of Christ. So when you stretch out your hand, it's Christ's hand. So no wonder blood will drop from your own hand. Because it's the hand of Jesus. I am not my own. I was bought with a price. May we begin to have revelation. Serious revelation. When we pray a walk around your estate, by the way, it's a powerful way to win souls. Prayer walk around your estate. You're tired of bars? Prayer walk. Prayer walk. Raka shororobo shindiriba. God, I thank you. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. And as you prayer walk, remember those are the feet of Jesus. And they are nail pierced feet. So the blood of Jesus is upon that place. Together with the promise that everywhere we step on, we shall possess the land. It doesn't matter whether a Muslim went and prayer walked there. It doesn't matter whether a Satan is went and prayer walked there. When we prayer walk there, the footprint is permanent. Because they are the footprints of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, if you make it a habit to prayer walk around your estate, within no time, people will just begin to get saved. Because why? The blood of Jesus. If it's dropping from a hand, it's dropping from a foot. It's dropping from his side. It's dropping from his beard. It's dropping from all the seven wounds of Christ. So as we pray for souls, I know sometimes it, it seems like such a big task, like such a big job, like such a big whatever situation. But remember, and by the way, the prayer for souls is one of the easiest prayers you'll ever make because all of heaven agree. Oh yeah, it's all about souls. So you're praying in the will of God. So you have no doubt that God will give you souls for the kingdom. I have no doubt that Sozo Church is going to fill up so seriously that we're actually going to have a problem with space. It happened at Tumaini House. It's going to happen here. And it's going to happen in the next place and the next place and the next place and the next place and the next place until Jesus returns. Because God will continue to add to our numbers as we preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. People are hungry. People are hungry. The only problem is that Satan has used corruption in the church. So now there are so many false places. People have been hurt. People have been done to. People have seen fakeness and all that stuff. People have, have seen all sorts of things until they chungulia from far. And it doesn't help that we have a strange name, Sozo. Yeah, Zozo. Ah, so, so, ah, Yapana. Someone told me the other day that they were asked at Yanyumitra in a hotel. I for sure it must be a brothel. Lanya and another co hotel other than Malaya and a tourist. So they're like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. This gospel will be preached everywhere. Under trees all over the place, it will be preached. If cinema halls have turned into churches, why will our hotel not turn into a church? Amen. Do you know we can claim this hotel for Jesus? And it becomes our church. Yes. I'm believing the Lord that you guys will be such a fiery congregation, including our online church, by the way, which is so on fire, that we can believe God and say, we are possessing this place in the name of Jesus. We are taking it. And by the way, we will not pay a coin for it. It will be given unto us. Yes. Why? Silver and gold belongs to the Lord. And even this hotel belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is more than able. The Lord is more than able. He is so faithful. The other thing I want to tell you is that the blood of Jesus, blood, blood means relationship. 
So when I say that, you know, my husband and I, by the way, we are joined by the blood of Jesus, isn't it? Yeah? He's not my blood relative. My son is my blood relative. And then we say what? Blood is thicker than water. Well, spirit is thicker than blood. And the blood of Jesus is full of spirit. Holy Spirit. None of us should be stuck somewhere, hungry and starving, and we, we are munching and drinking. There's a problem there with relationship. And the goodness is the blood of Jesus heals. May we learn to love one another. We need to learn to love one another. Be sensitive to one another. It's not once, it's not twice. That the Lord has spoken to me and told me, take this money, put it in an envelope, write the name of so-and-so, go and slip it under something. And that time I was praying, and there was a very annoying man in the prayer room. But that guy, he's still annoying, by the way, but it is well. And then the Lord told me, as you're annoyed with him, and as, as, as you allow me to deal with uh, why you're annoyed with him, <laughs> yeah, he, he shouts and shouts and wah, 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 in a foreign language, eh? And, oh, and body order in the works. But anyway, it is well. <laughs> the Lord is working on him as he's working on all of us. I'm sure I have annoying things. But as he says, the Lord says, now, in the midst of all that kernel thinking you're having right now in my presence, I would like you to go to your car, pick up this amount of money, write on a piece of paper this particular scripture. He gave it to me exactly where it is. And put them that piece of in this man's what you call stinky shoes. So, of course, uh, you can imagine how I walked and how we got to the stinky shoes that are the most best smelling shoes ever as we put the money in there. But guess what? The last time when I was praying, but they, I think part of the annoyance is, 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 is that I was praying, 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 and then I felt something funny and, and I looked and the guy was looking at me like, <laughs> I was thinking. Which part of my rings can you see as I madly flail my hands, you know, and worship the Lord? But anyway, I'm not even excusing it. So anyway, um, but, they, <laughs> but it's so bad that there's one of the sisters comes with air freshener in case the guy was around. <laughs> we need to really ask God to help us to change. What if we were to help him to shower and all those things? Anyway, so the next day, no, he didn't come for like two, three days. So, but when he came the next time, you should have seen him. What was he looking for? Who put the money in my shoes? So you see the way Jada talked about how when Yani, those were the best crisps she's ever eaten, the best ice cream she's ever eaten. And I don't know what else Mr. Moy did, but clearly. It's probably something she'll remember for the rest of her life. I, I don't know. I wish Maya could ask you how much it cost you, but I'm pretty sure it didn't cost you that much. So sometimes we think to do great things, it needs to cost us a whole bunch of money. But you can change someone's life if you will only accept the relationship that brings us together because we are related by the blood of Jesus Christ. But then let me tell you, when I began to have the revelation that my husband is my brother in Christ, it began to change how I relate with him. I'm not there yet, but the mouth I used to have that I would run amok. Yes, believe it or not, it would be there. <laughs> marriage is marriage is marriage. And a wife is a wife is a wife. Things began to change for me with my husband that no matter what kind of an exchange we have or no matter da, 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 one of the things that God has used to help me is, and I don't want to look at my husband, let's just look at me like, yeah, right. Anyway, so, I call my change, you call my change. Anyway, so, one of the things that God has used to change me, because I grew up in a family where, by the way, we had a lot of exercise with our mouths. We used to fight, but the best fight we used to have was a fight for words. And you know, we grew up in a, the era of kina penny, of kina good times, eh? And kina dynamite when you say something, eh? <laughs> so, we were trained by black Americans in kina different strokes, dynamite, to have the last say. 
So you memorize it. So the next time you have a fight, you're like, you know, it's just that we never used to do this. But you do the... <laughs> and, you know, and you say it, eh? And then when you're done, the next time when you get, go to your bedroom, you cry, you know, you're feeling bad. You're not saved. But still, the Holy Spirit is, his blood is for you. So when, when we'll be done, you finish and then you're thinking, I think this is why, part of why I stopped journaling, because you know I'd write down my plan. So I'm like, the next time I have to see this. Why didn't I see this? Why didn't I see? So I memorize it. So I'm walking around preparing because for my sister. Those days we used to have wanted, wanted, as in you're wanted. Eh? So we used to say wanted, yeah? What were I wanted? Am I the only one of wanted? What were I wanted? Wanted. So we are waiting for you. Mm, mm, mm. Then you just find your meal. Where? You're like, why are you and that crooked, twisted finger of yours? Like, was it Rampanzel? Then I had a kurushia. So I grew up with a lot of practice for words. You can't beat me at words. Come on, you could do it. It's just Jesus. Thank God. Now this is even give me a stammer when I'm about to speak badly. I, uh, 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 uh. So that sounds so nice after all. Yeah? Save my tongue, Lord. Deal with my tongue. So what stops me from hitting my husband below the belt when I remember the blood of Jesus and that he's my brother in Christ. So the blood of Jesus will cause you to change your behavior will cause you to change your choices. You'll be driving, you get into trouble with a cop. What will stop you from giving a bribe? The blood of Jesus. God, you paid for me with such a heavy price. I've made a mistake. Please forgive me, Lord, and get me out of this situation. But I will not have two wrongs making a right. I will not bribe. And you tell the officer, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. And hopefully they don't book you. But if they book you, the Lord will make a way out of it and you will learn. There are things you'll not do. Because if you're caught, you can't bribe. So you won't do. There's a way that we do business as believers. When you're sending your tender in, Cover it in the blood of Jesus. God will do crazy things. God will do ridiculous things. Like a piece of paper that had the right, the tender that could have won or whatever it is, or that was supposed to, maybe even money has already been poured, somewhere it disappears. God can do that. So that yours can be the one that wins. God can make it such that even the other people who are heathens, the blood of Jesus blots out their writing because they are heathen. And we are praying against corruption anyway. So the guys are like, none you are in a blank paper. And there's something on it, but the people in that committee cannot see it. And if there was ever to be an appeal, maybe giving reasons, probably it would go before a court and they're like, but this paper is written on. The blood of Jesus can do amazing things for you. Just learn to have faith that it's still working. It's still moving, and it is applied to every part of your life. Let me go back to relationship. You know, Muslims love each other. I was talking to a man who used to be a Muslim, and you know what he told me? He told me, Nini wa Christo. At that point, he was speaking like Nini. He said, Nini wa Christo. In case kitu ifanyike moja, wenu mnapitanga tu. But ngoja kitu ifanyike muislamu moja. Guza muislamu moja. Hii mumbasa tau niyote tasmama. And that's how Muslims are. They call each other brother and sister wherever they are. You know that if a Muslim dies, when they are on a journey, the other Muslims get out, find a place on the side of the road, and they bury that Muslim before the sun goes down. They bury them. Then they try to find a way of communicating with the relatives. If you walk into a Muslim's house and you're a Muslim and you say you're hungry, they will feed you. On the streets. Other than those ones who, are, of course, are enjoying us. There's no such thing. Let me not use a, let me use a chokora though, you know? That you street boys. 
tunakauliza sasa iti unaitwa nani Khalid <laughs> never ever no muslim street child why they have a system where they take care of one another but as christians you can't even be sensitive to that there's someone seated next to you and they probably don't even have bus fare for going back home they came with fare believing they've come to the house of the lord and they are believing that wakisha sasa ile wako huku kuna mtu atampatia pesa cuz they like you so they can't support sana eh kulingana venye na wanaanga online hey they are so loving and they come they find people hallelujah knows up in the air cannot be bothered your little child is eating crisps right next to a child who cannot eat and can eat and the child is just watching them into the packet into the mouth down the throat into the packet and katoto kana fikiria tu yani hiyo crisp tu nikipata tu kamoja kamoja tu may we truly be united by the blood of Jesus Christ because we are a family in the family of Christ you don't get to choose who gets in everyone is welcome into this family there are all sorts of shapes sizes and of course at different levels of baking people are all being baked at a different level wengine ni kama wameungua but it is well wengine ni kama mkoro wengine ni kama wamjai oxgata oven ni nini you know that process of god of god working on us so there are people you will not like in your family are there people you don't like but you have to love them isn't it they are your family May the Lord give us love for one another based on that you are a Christian. You are born again. I love you. You're my brother. And when you say it, you mean it. You're my sister. I love you. When I don't see you in church, I actually missed you. I may not have talked to you. But I go to Maria and I'm like, there's this chick, there's this guy who sits here, here, here. Sitting on a church school like two Sundays. And you call the person and you're like, hi, I know you don't know me, but you're so and so. Are you okay? I'm not seeing you in church. Do you know people who come to church? Today I met someone I'll not name because I don't want to embarrass and I was like, "Hey dude, I've not seen you for some time, eh?" He says, "Yeah, even Pastor Carol calls." I'm like, "Yeah, we well, like we've missed you." And you could see the look at the look at me. Really? As in with all these people you noticed? And for real, I was so pleased to see this gentleman. I was like, "You're here. Church is different when you're not here." Church is different when any of us. But then let me tell you, even though we want to act like we're not bothered, when even one person goes, there's a shift. There's a change because we are family. May we have a culture of Jesus Christ. A culture of love. A culture where it's real, back out babies love each other. You know? My my um and by the way, those babies you're trying to snob might be your daughter-in-law, your brother, your son-in-law. <laughs> So as you're building yeah it's coming it's coming there'll be teenagers soon in a few years we took we took our son to a school called Babi Kids in Buruburu and one of the things that really touched me okay you know the goodness with when when you have a first born eh, you're experimenting and making a lot of mistakes but also it's everything is so new so one of the things was Jonathan with his little gray and 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 purple uniform and then we are taking him to baby school then he has his cash school bag which is really empty and he's going to school and then when we get to the gate because of course we are always like on the late side so when we get to the gate the two little ones all of them to small and Jonathan they come and they hug him hi they're like oh they are so cute and for real it was standard John I don't know if you remember that I told you. Can you imagine? I remember it for you. But they just so cute. And they're hugging each other and they're happy to see each other. And I'll dance with Nancy, but see they were together yesterday. Like yeah, they're just like that. They love one another. I know you've been hurt. But may the blood of Jesus deal with that hurt so that you can love again. Because in here you're safe. Someone may hurt you because we are human beings. But if we don't take offense and we choose to forgive one another and we choose to keep walking this journey together guys we're going to have an amazing church 
and we're going to enter heaven all of us together rejoicing because the blood of Jesus truly made us family. We truly care. We truly look out. We truly, you know, you're praying for someone and God reveals something to you. Sometimes you can be praying for someone and God just tells you something and you begin to understand this is why this person is like this. And the Lord causes you to cause them to just, just love them. Love on them. Yeah? Notice if someone is with you and, you know, something happens. You notice they're not themselves today. Are you okay? Is everything okay? And the person is like, oh gosh, I hope it's not showing. Tell them, no, 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 no. It's just that, you know, I was paying attention to you and I noticed you nobody know, smiles. But today you're not smiling. I hope everything is okay. Whatever it is, if you need a friend, I'm here. If you need someone to talk to, I'm here. And then Tafadali, to weke masiriza wengine. Sasawa. Don't turn them into. Ha! 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 Uyo niku na mwananga tu wapo na kismile, smile. Let me tell you that brother. Kwa hata si jina muta brother ni lakini si wote tumeokoka. You know, then now you're there spilling and unleashing. Family does not go out. We protect one another. We shield each other. We cover one another. Love covers a multitude of sin. And as we close this service, I want to ask you, is there somebody you have not seen lately? Could you check on them? Could you check out there? After the overflow, oh, by the way, please, in the same manner of love, some of you leave at 1 o'clock, you go and bully my guys to serve you food, you finish food for us. So when we come out at 4 o'clock, there's no food. Tafadhalini. Imagine, it's one of the problems we're having. Just shows a lack of love. You've left at 1. We're leaving at 4. Who needs the food more than the other? You're sabuni ngumu. I know we love free meals, but if you're going to have a free meal, you're going to have to do the work of the overflow. Mm. Then after you've eaten, after you've eaten from the Lord, we go and eat together. Because at that time we are really hungry. Sawa, sawa. So let's mind one another. Let's care about one another. Let's be sensitive to one another. But let's let the blood of Jesus wipe over everything. You know, by the way, I grew up believing that people are bad because, you know, my parents had had bad experiences. My siblings were all older than me had had bad experiences. And for the longest time, I really thought people are bad because, yeah, Satan will line up a whole bunch of horrible people to convince you that people are bad so that you can stay in your shell. But in 2012, when the Lord called me, and then he called me to women, I was like, yeah, God, it had to be women, not to men. You couldn't just phenomenally change, phenomenally change me so that I did with men. They are easier. It had to be women with my gossip and my drama and my comparisons and all that. And by then, let me tell you, when the Lord called me in 2012, I hated women. I hated women. I thought women were just the nastiest thing ever. So I was like, how will you do this? But guess what? Between 2012 and now, for the last six years, I've met the most amazing women. As in not even one has ever done something that is just outrightly, you know, to hurt me, to grieve me. Those who have hurt me, it wasn't deliberate. And they, they actually love Jesus. They work out their salvation for the last six years. Amazing women. It's like when I answered the call of God and then I went and took my prayer to God. It's like God just went and insisted and just said, Akapana lakini akayes. You know? And, and I've met, man, I, I have women around me who I just, I hold and I'm closer to them than my own siblings. They are really my sisters. I'm like, so someone, someone tell them, I, I've really missed you. And you know your, you know the prophetic ear is those are the, okay, Lord, I'm listening to the other side. What did she mean? And the Lord says, there's nothing to hear. She actually missed you. Someone bought me a really expensive perfume on my birthday. I'm like, because she knew I love perfume. And by the way, that morning, I thought about, I wish someone could buy me perfume. Never mind that I have so many, and this person knows I have so many still. But I'm still thinking, oh, perfume would be nice. I'm like, oh, perish the thought. Who spend all that money on perfume? You know, designer perfume. But then when I say perfume, please listen to me. I've been to Sudan. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm very particular about fragrance. And I just, I thought cross my mind. I'm like, and when it was bought, I actually got perfume. Then I got perfume from another Qatar lady in Qatar as well. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got two perfumes. Then I'm like, okay. My own sister is not interested in me, but guess what? I'm a hit. My sisters love me. I've got all these sisters who love me. They find something in me.
know, what did it take? I had to take to the Lord my heart by women. I had to take to the Lord my, this thing where men had this thing where they would think of me like a piece of meat. So I would meet men who would just want to eat that meat. And I've met wonderful brothers. No, yesterday I was with, uh, where is Rashid? Is he here? Yesterday I'm with Rashid, Rashid was saying, I'm with Rashid yesterday and I was trying to pass something into his hand, Kikando. So I'm holding his hand and I'm, I'm like this on his hand. There are all these people. I'm peeping to make sure they're not saying, see, you know, you don't want the left to see. So I'm there and then I'm trying to see. And Rashid Ashiki. So anyway, I left the thing hanging. Then I went around to the other side. Then I felt peep. So I peeped. The thing is hanging. So I'm back. I'm trying again. Rashid, you know? And I'm there. Then I go there and finally I got I got it up. Rashid ni ni ni. I I'm trying to give you something. Take it. And he looks Oh <laughs> said, you know you're my sister in Christ. So I thought we'd go to Nashikam Kono. I'm like I'm Rashid. Rashid, that, that can be kukutongoza or something. But but look at it. His his thoughts were so pure that he didn't think of me as a chick or a woman. He thought of his sister in Christ. So he thought I was playing with him. May the Lord take us to that place of purity. Do you know one of the problems the Ethiopia church has? They love each other so much that they are unable to see each other as, what's up? Imagine. That's one of the things they were telling me. I was telling, like, the two of them are telling them, are you guys an item? They're like, no, no, we are not. This is my brother. And then the guy is like, this is my sister. I'm like, yeah, my husband is my brother too, you know? <laughs> and then they're like, hey, apostle, you know, we love each other so much. And I got to learn there's a problem with the Ethiopia church, that they love each other so much that they are unable to be attracted to one another. Can you imagine? What a beautiful problem to have. <laughs> I would love to pray those kind of prayers. The Lord so and so and so and so. Lord, deal with that love between them, Lord. And attract them to each other, Father. Instead of stories, huh? My sexual sin. The Lord can transform us by the renewal of the mind so that when you see a beautiful woman, you think, what a beautiful sister in Christ. And you get to know them without thinking of serious motives. And when you date them, you don't even hold their hand lest you fall into sexual sin. But there I said this in the betrothed class and everybody burst out laughing. Because they thought I was joking. You know, believers don't even hold hands until we get married. I'm not going to talk about kissing. I'm not going that far. Holding hands. We don't hold hands. When we court, we love each other. We don't meet in private. We don't get to anywhere intimate. We don't hug one another. Anything that could cause us to fall into sin. And guess what? You'll get married faster. Some of you caught for five years. Which believers are courting for five years? Seriously, by the way, guys, I'm so serious. How are you courting for five years? When you're courting for five years, are you made of stone? We need to have another class for this. But what am I saying? The blood of Jesus will just make right even the weirdest of things. That's why I'm going into such things that you never think the blood of Jesus has anything to do with. I told you that this preaching would be different from anything you've ever heard because these are the things that the Lord has been teaching me. When you get married to someone who's your brother in Christ, you get married to someone who's your sister in Christ, the Lord will cause your intimacy on the marriage bed to be like nothing you've ever known. Because you're giving to each other. You're ministering to each other's needs. It's not about taking. It's not about getting. It's about glorification of the Lord. You'll be able to say, you know what? Maybe she's not being so nice to me. Maybe he's not being so nice to me. Maybe someone, you know, the grass is looking a little green out there. But it's okay, Lord. There are seasons, there are times, and there are things. So the same way that in family we bear with each other, through seasons, through times, through things. You will bear with the marriage. So your wife is having a baby or has had a baby, and she's tired. And yeah, you've been told apparently men, do you have a cycle within seven days, they have to release what? You know the rubbish that we hear. Yeah, it's one of the things we are told, apparently, <laughs> according to biology. 
natural prince. We have self-control by the Holy Spirit. And by the blood of Jesus, we have a different lineage. So you can wait. You can wait. Rather than go and try to sort yourself out elsewhere. And what you do is that you break the covenant. Because you unite yourself to some other blood. Because intercourse is about blood. You become one flesh. And you completely change everything. And you think, oh God, I made one mistake and everything will be fine. It's such an expensive mistake. It can destroy everything. It can take your family from wealth to poverty. It can take your family from health to sickness because of that one mistake. It can take you from life expectancy of 100 to 40 because of that one mistake. Because when you become one flesh with another person, that blood, it begins to speak in the place of the blood of Jesus. And may we understand the issue of soul ties. Even if it's on television, pornography, or whatever it is. That's why, by the way, if you find me emphasizing on sexual sin, sexual sin is one of the most dangerous sins ever. The only other sin I can compare it to in terms of danger is taking the life of another person. Because of blood. Blood and covenant. Blood and covenant. If we only began to understand the intensity of blood, the power of blood, the speaking of blood. When it says the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, what does it say? Because clearly the blood of Jesus talks. It has a mouth. What does it say? Everything that is written here. All the promises of God. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will shield you. I will protect you. With long life, I will fulfill you. I will prosper you. I will lead you in paths of righteousness. I will see, lead you beside the still waters. I will give you rest. Your mind is weary. But you get rest in the presence of God. One of the gifts we don't understand that we've been given as believers is that there, unless you are covered by the blood of Jesus, there is no rest. You're like Cain, wandering with a mark on your head. No one can kill you. No one can bring you to rest. But the blood of Jesus is applied on our lives. And we find rest. You can be tired from walking and all those things, but you're in a place of rest somehow. That's why as a Christian you can have chaos. You can have drama. And I've learned to say, peace is not the absence of trouble. It's the presence of God. That's why you can be going through amazing things, crazy things. And you meet someone, they're like, way, way, you're looking so good. And you're thinking that that person is just like a jealous person or something. No, the blood. The blood of Jesus. That's why when the blood of Jesus is applied on us, even our age, no one can tell. They'll meet you and they are, they are guessing 20 years below your age. 15 years below your age. 30 years below your age. Because he renew our youth. Oh, if only we'd learn the beauty of the promises of God. And the power of the blood of Jesus. We'd stop worrying. Because there is life in the blood. Everything you need in the blood. It can be found in the blood. If you're sick, claim the blood of Jesus upon that sickness. And declare that I have an anointing in me that nothing else can take away. The blood of Jesus. It's impossible for me to get sick. How did I get sick? I can't get sick. The blood of Jesus cannot hold disease. Disease will flee. Remember I made for you guys a demonstration and I'm closing. Remember this guy called John G. Lake? Loved to show off. And we really need more Christians like this. He organizes a meeting. They have the plague. And they offer themselves together with his disciples, the people he's been teaching. And they go together to take care of people who have the plague. They are offered suits. And they're like, we don't need suits. So they're taking care of people who have the plague, which is extremely contagious, and nothing is happening to them. So the medical guys are like, how come you guys are not catching the plague? You know, I want to cut you up and do a scientific whatever. They say, I'm too anointed to be sick. When, when a germ comes near me, it dies because of the glory of God upon me. And that's the blood of Jesus. 
It cannot mix with vermin. It cannot mix with diseases. It cannot mix with anything else. It's impossible. And when you get that conviction, let me tell you, the moment you even say it, that sickness bows. It actually bows. So this guy organizes and says, I'll do a demonstration for you. He says, bring a microscope and then get me uh, foam from the mouth because foam was the, is the most contagious part. So, because if you get a bite from someone with an ini because of the saliva, you get the plague. So he said, get me, get me a whatever, get me a foam from the mouth of somebody with, who's sick. So the person is, the, the foam is brought. He says, put it under the microscope. It's put under the microscope. He says, what do you see? He says, I see the germs, the plague germs, whatever they're called, whatever rightis or whatever it is they're called. And then the guy says, okay, remove it. So he puts his hand under and he says, pour it on me. Look through the microscope and do you know when these plague germs were falling on his hand, they were dying instantly. Dying instantly. Dying instantly. Is it that some people are greater than others? No, it's not. The same anointing in John G. Lake is the same anointing in each and every one of us. What's the difference? Know who you are. Know the power of the blood of Jesus. Know the ability of this blood of Jesus. Know the promises of the blood of Jesus. And know that God is not a liar. And go forward. Be bold. Be strong. Be of good courage. And step forward and be used by the Lord. The Bible says that the Lord is looking for a man. For a woman who stand in the gap. You just need to say, I'm here, Lord. You might, you might say, I'm here like this. You know, me, I said I was here like this. You know? And some of you don't even know the character of God. You think that, you know, I had Priscilla uh, Shira. She's called Priscilla, Priscilla Shira or Shira. And she was saying that, I said, you know, some of you, some of you all think, if I say, Lord, here I am, you're going to be sent to Africa. I'm like, ha, ha, we're already in Africa. So us guys are going to say we'll be sent where? <laughs> you look at Apostle, and you're like, well, you know what? The blood of Jesus is the greatest bomb shelter ever. Because now to the right, to the left, it shall never come near you. Amen. Wherever the Lord sends you, he will make a testimony of your life. And even how we die as believers, it's to the glory of God. We don't just die careless deaths because Jesus died a bad death. So even that was taken care of. He also died young. Have you ever thought about why Jesus died at 33? He died prematurely so that we don't have to die prematurely. So some of us, and depending where you're from, what to our Western Mkwapi, you guys surprise me. You seem to love death. It shocked me. When I got married in, in 2000, I, I remember by like 2001, 2002, I'm like, hey, honey, I'm not You know? I'm like, huh? So my husband's like, what do you mean? And, and maybe I came across as arrogant, but I'd never seen so much death in my life. By, by the year 2000, I had lost a grandfather. I had lost only, or oh, and a cousin. And that was it. At my age, those were the only people I'd lost. I still had three grandparents. Um, of course, okay, there were the great grandparents, other than the old ones, it was time for them to rest. But besides those, I'd only lost a grandfather at the age of 85. And then a cousin. The only premature death we'd had up to that point was a cousin. I am past 40 now. And again, I can tell you, other than grandparents, there is an uncle who died at about, I think, the age of, uh, I think he was 60 years old. But again, we've only lost a cousin. It's possible. And people say all sorts of things. Oh, you know, you guys are from Central. You're near hospitals. You have money. No, we got Jesus. And we don't celebrate funerals. We don't have a boogie. You say you're celebrating life. But really, what are you celebrating? How do you have a bash because somebody died? I'm sorry. I'm going to correct that. No. You know, there's a funeral that I attended in Bondo. And in that funeral, the Lord opened my spiritual eyes. First of all, the demons were asking, woman of God, after stressing us during the election, what have you come here to do? You've come to bring devastation here to Bondo. That's one of the things the demons were saying. Then the Lord caused us to see people jumping off in Land Rovers, doing crazy dances. I'm like, someone died. Aren't we supposed to be crying? Aren't we supposed to be mourning? Why are we dancing? And yes, it's culture, but it's time for people to begin to ask themselves, is there something wrong with that culture? Then we get to the bomber, 
and the Holy Spirit tells me, I want you to watch with spiritual eyes. And the coffin gets in, I don't know from which side, then it's lifted up and they're singing. And I really irritated my husband because I kept asking, what are they singing? What are they singing? And my husband asked me, Yen, you really, really think we are occult people or something like that? Eh? <laughs> you just think we are saying what? See, we are just mourning. And by then my husband was getting so irritated because I kept asking, what are they saying? What are they saying? What are they saying? Because like, I was interpreting for him also in the spiritual. I've learned not to interpret so much nowadays. But I was interpreting for him the things I'm seeing. Yeah. No, kama mungu na kodachanga vitu mingi chunga. Unaweza kupeleka ukue committed because, you know, uku, 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 iko kitu. But guess what I was hearing as the coffin was being lifted up? I, in the spiritual realm, I was hearing, hail death. We praise you death. And then I saw a demon, a big ugly demon. And he said, oh yes, I'm the spirit of death. And listen how they are praising me. Listen to how they are rejoicing. Listen to how they are lifting up praises to me. No wonder, the next time, it's your neighbor, and your neighbor, and your neighbor, and your neighbor. And the home is just full of graves. And it's okay for the home to be full of graves or people who have lived to a long, rich life. We were talking about 90s and above. To show shows and to go. So even if you cry, you're crying because Aki she was so cute. But okay, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Okay, yeah, you know, watch a tua pumzika. I come a chapa. You know, you get to that place. But not coffins of babies, coffins of 30 year olds, coffins of 25 year olds. What is that? We need to learn to apply the blood of Jesus even to our cultural practices and to the things we believe and to the things we uphold. And say, Lord, you know, I have a friend of ours. When their mom died, they were told, oh, the coffin has to enter where and come through there. They said, us, we are saved. So they were told, hi, Atu. They buried. The village guys were pissed off with them. Then they were told, you know, you have to hang around. Then did you do what? Then in 40 days, you have to do what? They said, we told you, us, we are saved. It's been several years. They've been waiting for them to die and a catastrophe to hit. They have not died. They are still there. Will you stand up? and say, I'm of the royal blood. Will you stand up and say, no, this is different. This is not right. And you know the saddest thing? Some of these cultural practices are even done by people who are bishops, people who are pastors. So it confuses everybody. Who's doing those Mount Kenya rites? The elders of Kinama PCA, ACK, they are there. And what happens? So when we're telling our husbands, no, they're like, no, there's nothing wrong. Ata elders walikua. Anyone been told that? Ata elders wa kanisa walikuwa. Ata pastors walikuwa. And we are bringing confusion because we are caught up in the blood of our ancestors instead of the blood of Jesus Christ. Why are we slaughtering animals? Is Jesus not enough? Is that sacrifice not enough? Why are we pouring blood on the floor? Why do we need to do that? We don't need to do that. Why do we need to circumcise our children beside the river and blood is just pouring down on the ground? Why is it necessary when they can be taken to hospital and circumcised in hospital? Will your child not be a man unless he's locked into a house and he's taught by someone that this is the ways of men? Some of us women, we're even paying single mothers. We are paying people at Mtotoako Memadiza class 8 at their go away. And because you don't want to think about your child's private parts because it's a little embarrassing, they go away and you don't even know what your child has been taught. Then your child comes back and begins to behave funnily. Kumbe, they were told you are the man of the house. No man should tell you nothing. You have to sleep around. Have you ever known what they teach those children? The Jews were circumcised on the eighth day. Were they not men? Were they not men? Remember, the Bible says there is no circumcised, there is no uncircumcised. It doesn't matter anymore. Unless you do it for health reasons. It's got nothing to do with manhood. These babies, I bet, wail in hospital. Okay, well, they have anesthesia. But are you even there to tell? The doctor will never give you that report. But it makes them a man all of a sudden. We have to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. There is so much that is wrong with how we do things, and it's because we don't understand the magnitude and the implications of the blood of Jesus. When we have fasts, we are saying, Lord, reveal to me, what does it mean to be called a son of God? What does it mean that Jesus is my big brother? Yesterday, I was somewhere, and I can't even remember where, or the day before, maybe. I've told you I can't remember days. And 
I'm driving and suddenly just a, such a revelation hit me of Jesus is my big brother. I'm like, I call you brother. How cool is that? You're my brother. So I'm like, hey, brother, as we go to church on Sunday, eh, this blood story of yours, eh, boy, you tell me what we are talking about, this blood of yours. Because eh? you really died like a weird death, man. Just tell me. Tell me, tell me, help me to teach them. They're your children at the end of the day. These are our brothers and sisters. And you've given me a responsibility that sometimes I think is too big, Jesus. But you're my brother. Won't you join me on Sunday and help me teach? Won't you deposit revelation to me and help me tell them just what they need that will change their lives forever? Are you hearing the way God, a revelation leads to a different kind of way of praying? A revelation leads to another way of looking at things. I mean, I have a powerful big brother, Joe. I have a powerful big brother, and what a coincidence. He's also your big brother. So guess what? We all are sisters and brothers. Amen. How cool, man. You guys, our big brother sits in heaven. He sits in heaven, our big brother. You know a big brother looks out for the small sisters and small brothers. He sits in heaven, looking out for us, making sure nothing goes wrong. Stretches out his hands like this. And all of heaven remembers the sacrifice and that God is a covenant keeper. And because the blood was shed, God is bound by this word. God is bound by this word. He has to fulfill it. He's got to. May we realize. What are you praying for? Your big brother is in heaven making intercession for you. Sit on the right hand side of the father. If the father feels like he's far, guess what? Our big brother's like, what's up? Okay, it's this side, huh? I think. Trust me, I'm a woman, so we left and right is the same. So he's like, hey, oh, dad. Yeah? Mama there has got uh, an issue. And remember I said that by the stri my stripes, she's healed. So papa, what do you say? Shall we release healing? And father says, no, they need to learn a little lesson here. Let's give it a little time. Then Jesus stands and says, Oi, Michael, go. Make sure I keep my promise to present that one before our Father on that day. It's not your time. Preserve them. Don't let the enemy touch them to a point where they can't bear. And when you have that revelation, no matter what you're going through, you will know. I like, I, I enjoy having a dramatic mind. That gives me that thing of, God, I can see. Yeah. Michael, you're here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Michael is here. And guess what? We don't bow down to angels. In fact, the Bible says we will judge angels. So, sorry, is that guardian angel wangu. Ati, eh, let me behave less, my guardian angel. Nothing. The blood of Jesus is the one that speaks. The angels serve us. May the Lord bless you. How I pray that we would get into a deep revelation of God and who he is. Amen? Amen. 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 Shall we pray? Even as we bow our heads, I ask you to bow your heart before the Lord. You're saying in your heart, and yeah, God, I'm realizing, eh? There's so much more to this gospel. There's a way that, Lord, I'm hearing this gospel and I'm thinking, maybe I've got this twisted. Maybe there's too much influence of the wounds in my life, of my past of what I've seen, of culture, of, of my experience, of, of my personality, of where I'm at. I'm just going to pray for you that you may have a deep revelation in days to come and starting today of the love of God. But even before we do that, with every head bowed and every eye closed, is there anyone who cannot call Jesus your big brother because you're not born again? Because if you're not born again, he's not your big brother. If you're not born again, you can only watch the story of the blood of Jesus, but it doesn't apply to you. You're here today and you're saying, what an amazing inheritance. What an amazing thing. I've never thought of the blood of Jesus that way. Maybe you've always thought of salvation as a punishment thing, as a thing you do, kisha chapa life, you know? Is there anyone who would like to give their life to Jesus? and begin walking in the wonder and the shelter 
and the protection and the provision and every promise of the blood of Jesus. Anyone just lift up your hand in the presence of God? You can check for us online if anyone. Are we online? We are online. So just check for me. And other comments, just say, I would like to get saved. Don't even type everything. Just say me. We will know at what point you're saying me. And we'll take a moment and pray with you. For those in church, you're not born again. Please don't leave the house of God with knowledge, but without the wisdom that comes with the blood of Jesus. Anyone who would like to give their life to Christ? Just lift up your hand. I'll see it wherever you are. Or you've not been walking with God and you need to rededicate your life as well. You can do that right now. Lift up your hand before God. Sometimes things happen and we fall away from God. Is there anyone? I'll make an assumption that we're all born again then. Online, anyone here? Okay, we'll go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness, your love, and your mercy. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody, if you're born again, just say thank you for the blood of Jesus. Fathers, your children say thank you for the blood of Jesus. Cause them to have a revelation of even what they're saying. Cause them to have a revelation of the wondrous working power of the blood of Jesus. Because we are here today because of that blood of Jesus. We are sustained by that blood of Jesus. Father, we ask you to give us a revelation of your love, of your mercy, and of who we are in you, Lord, because I am persuaded that if we get to understand that, and we get to understand your character, because God, you're so amazing, you're so good, Lord, it amazes me that you are God, with such beauty, such humility, such love in a heart of service. God, if we have a revelation, we will walk in power. We will walk in holiness. We will walk in fear of you, regardless of what happens. We won't have a vindictive thing, a thing of discouragement where we decide to go it alone, oh God. So give us revelation, Father. And cause the word of God to come alive as we read it, as we hear it, Lord, in a fresh new way, Lord. <coughs> Father, let the blood of Jesus locate people for ministry, laborers for the vineyard, God. And let the blood of Jesus bring in a bountiful harvest, my Father. Fill your house, O oh God, with your glory and your power and your presence. We love you, Lord. How we love you, Jesus, O oh God. There is no greater, greater joy than to serve you. There is no greater joy than to be called a son of God. There is no greater joy to know, Lord, that we can serve you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Abide in us, O oh God. And teach us to abide in you, O oh God. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Somebody just tell Jesus you love him. Just take a few minutes. Thank you for the message. Just take a few minutes. Thank you for the message. Ask him to cause it to find fertile soil that will not be stolen from you. <coughs> Ask him to unpack it, Father, for you. Ask him to lead you to yet another message and another message until you completely burst with revelation. Just let him know you're willing. Just let him know you're willing. Say, God, I'm willing. Just teach me, Lord. I'm willing. I'm willing, Lord, I want to learn. I don't want to go to heaven and be surprised. I want to enter heaven and find everything that I found on earth, Lord. And heaven is just a confirmation of your glory on earth, God. I don't want to be limited by anything, God. I want to do great things for you, God, and I want to do great things with you, God. Just tell him. Just tell him. If you're afraid, tell him, Lord, I'm afraid. Lord, I have character issues that need to change in your presence. Just speak to him. He's listening. He's here. He's here. He's here and he's saying, just speak to me. Just speak to me. Speak to me. Hallelujah. 
I'm just feeling someone's being healed. Somebody's being healed. There you go, another release of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Oh, there's another wave of the Holy Ghost. If he doesn't find a place to land, he lifts. What does the blood of Jesus need to do in your life? The Holy Spirit is here to attend to whatever it is. Are there some raw places in your life? Are there areas that are not quite going right in your life? Are you struggling with doubt? What are you struggling with? Are you feeling dejected? Are you feeling rejected? Let the blood of Jesus speak. You're going to feel the Holy Ghost as you let the blood of Jesus speak. Because the blood of Jesus precedes the Holy Spirit. Oh, I feel an anointing being released in this place. I feel breakthroughs in the house of the Lord. Online church too. I see some of you on the online church on the floor of your rooms. I see some of you trying to control yourselves. Oh, you're breaking down in the presence of God as the Lord is just ministering love to you. Love like you've never known. <laughs> oh, let the Lord just love on you. Let the Lord just love on you. Let the Lord just heal you. Hallelujah. Let the Lord minister to your business concept. Let the Lord come upon you with a divine revelation, a divine idea. Some of you are just receiving a strategy thing. There's something wrong with your business. And the Lord, there's something wrong with your work, your business. And the Lord is suddenly just revealing to you something. Something. An idea that you have shelved is suddenly coming to your remembrance. Don't look at me. Focus on Jesus. It's not coming from me. I have nothing to offer. Focus on Jesus. I'm hearing answers just being released in the house of the Lord right now. You've been asking why the Lord is giving you an answer. Just by faith like a child. Have the faith of a child. For some of you just hear the Lord saying, it's over. The weeping is over. The season is changing. The atmosphere is changing. Even this room will never be the same again. Sozo Church is turning a chapter. We will never be the same again. Starting right now, we've already moved to another chapter. Greater heights, greater places. If you're watching us online and you're a minister of the gospel, receive that for your ministry as well. Greater chapter. Greater release. We are one family of Christ. Oh, thank you, God of surprises. Oh, thank you, Lord, you're stepping into situation. Come on, guys, don't be afraid. Please open up your heart to the Lord.